Hello again, everyone. This is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus drydocks.com here in the garage. And uh, as you can see, I've got two submarines uh, in front of me. Both of them are 3D printed. Now, 3D printing is, uh, is really going to revolutionize the hobby. Um, it's not quite there yet, but there is application for it right now. And it is a great way to get into the hobby for a little bit less money. Let me show you what I've got going on here. What I've got here in my hands in front of me is a 196 scale US Los Angeles attack submarine. Uh, it's about 43 inches in overall length, got a four inch beam to it. So it is a great size uh, for the pond, a little bit too big for the pool, um, but it'll have enough presence on and under the water when you get it into the bigger uh, bodies of water that you won't lose sight of it and it will behave in a very realistic manner. This is the newest uh, 3D printed offering from the NautilusDrydocks.com. I've got a few submarines there for you. Uh, one that will be coming out uh, soon is that 96 scale uh, Nautilus, 571 Nautilus. But until then, let's take a look at the, uh, at the LA. This is a little bit different than the typical setup uh, that I do both for standard buildups and when I generate 3D files. This one was uh, built in conjunction with a very talented individual out of Canada who helped generate the actual 3D files themselves. The big difference between this is rather than being split at the center line, as most RC submarines are, this one is split uh, vertically in two places, at the bow uh, and at the stern. And I'll show you how that works. Basically, the really cool thing about it is this bayonet system and uh, it allows access to the interior and the bow of the boat using this very, very cool bayonet system. So you basically just uh, slip the bow in place, give it a twist, and it's permanently locked in place. No tools required. Uh, and the same thing happens at the rear. And uh, you can see all of the linkages I have installed in here. This one basically is ready for installation of the watertight cylinder. Uh, these files are as printed. This has not had any post-production on it other than a quick coat of primer. So I haven't even sanded the hull down. You, know, you can see from a distance it looks great. Um, what I would recommend though is uh, a rub down with some coarse and then fine grit sandpaper and a new coat of primer to really uh, bring that detail out. So as I mentioned, this it was the prototype that uh, I utilize to make sure that all of the files print out properly and assemble easily. If you're thinking about purchasing this, and it is available for purchase and download at the NautilusDrydocks.com, I will put the link in the description of the video. I printed this at 0.2 millimeters of resolution, which is about halfway between super fine and coarse detail on a 3D printer. After I did that, it worked out to approximately 115 hours of print time. Um, so make sure that your printer is free for an extended period of time and you have enough filament uh, to print it all out. This particular boat, as I said, is completely set up for RC operation. All of the appendages uh, are fully functional. All of the holes are pre-done, uh, and that includes the fair water planes up in the sail there. We've got vent holes in the top for air, and we've also got drain holes in the bottom for uh, water for drainage. When it comes to selecting the plastic that you print your RC submarine in, most hobby grade 3D printers are gonna be utilizing something called PLA plastic, which will work okay. It's not ideal for an RC submarine hull, not so much because water ab absorbs into the plastic, although many people will say that that's a problem. It's not. Uh, it would be if you kept it in the water for months and months on end. Uh, but for our application, just dunking it from time to time is certainly not an issue. The big issue, though, is that PLA melts at a very low temperature, 
and it smells like popcorn, by the way. But the problem is when you've got a dark boat hull out in the sun, it gets hot very quickly and it can very easily distort the hull. Now, this particular one I think is gonna be less prone to that because it's a little bit thicker and because of these vertical splits in the hull, it will be less prone to warping. So if you've got the ability, ABS plastic is a very good choice, um, but certainly the standard PLA or PLA plus filaments are more than adequate to get your feet wet in the hobby if you're just getting started. Well, there you go, everyone. This is the 196 scale US Los Angeles class attack submarine 3D files for download from the NautilusDryDocs.com. I really appreciate you joining me. By all means, if you've got any questions or comments, I would love to hear from you. Email me anytime, bob at rc-sub.com. Or if you go to my website, I've got a messaging service there and uh, your comments will go directly to my phone. I'll be able to reply to you. If you want to put a comment in this video, by all means do it. Uh, I try and check them as often as I can, but if you're looking for a reply in a reasonable amount of time, uh, email and messaging is going to be the way to do it. Again, my name is Bob Martin. I am the RC Sub Guy with the NautilusDryDocs.com. Thanks for joining me, everyone. We'll catch you next time.